Michelle Dixie here. Today I want to address the question of how much does it cost to walk the Camino de Santiago? The easy answer to this question is it depends. It depends on several contributing factors, one of which is which Camino are you walking? There are several in Europe and in Spain, so I assume that the prices of the different Caminos in Spain are pretty similar but I know that the French way is the most popular way and has the most traffic on it. With more traffic, there are more businesses trying to serve the pilgrims, more competition means lower prices often. So with that extra infrastructure serving the pilgrims, I've heard that it is cheaper on the French way than some of the other routes. So if you are on a real tight budget, then that might be something to think about. Next, you have to consider what amount of luxury is required for you to be comfortable. Some people are okay with more minimal lodging and then others want more comfortable and private lodging. So your lodging and food options especially will affect how much your Camino costs you total. And finally, what I consider the biggest contributing factor to how much the Camino will cost you is how many days it takes you to complete it. A lot of folks take about 30 to 35 days, that's the average time to walk from St. Jean Pied de Port all the way to Santiago. Now, with that said, it took me and Montana 48 days to walk that distance, and we took our sweet time. We knew we had a little over two months for our whole experience, which included going to Paris before we started the Camino and then going to Italy once we finished the Camino. So we knew we didn't want to get in a big rush. We wanted to explore the larger towns. So that's really going to play into your budget, how much time you want to spend out there. So most people tend to talk about the price tag of their Camino in a daily average amount. I would say that most people spend between 25 euro to 50 euro per day with all of those factors considered. So let's talk about those daily costs. One of the biggest things being food. For breakfast, it's common to see things like toast, pastries, and tortilla, which was one of my favorite things that I ate in Spain. It's kind of like a quiche type thing, but anyway, if you eat something like that with a cafe con leche, which is just coffee with milk, you can expect to pay somewhere between 350 and 5 euro. For lunch, sometimes I would eat at a bar along the way, and then sometimes I just grab snacks and keep walking and, and eat as I went. So I expected to spend anywhere from three to seven euro on lunch or eating during the day. For dinner, me and Montana usually opted to go with the pilgrims menus. Those are offered at the albergues if they have a bar attached to them or if where you're staying doesn't have food, then there are usually bars nearby that you can go get a dinner and they'll have what's called the peregrino menu. And with that, they serve a three course meal that has a starter, so usually a salad or some kind of pasta. And then you have your main course, which is commonly a meat with a side and then a dessert. And with that, you get water or wine to drink or sometimes both. That usually runs about 10 to 12 euro. And at the beginning, if you don't really have that hiker hunger going yet, then it's probably a little cheaper and more reasonable to just get something a la carte from the bar. But as you go along, you're probably gonna find that your hunger increases and those pilgrims menus are really a good deal. Now, some tips if you're looking to save a little bit of money on food. First of all, shop at the marketplaces. Not all of the towns or villages that you'll stay in will have a market, but usually once a day or every other day, you're gonna pass through an area that has some sort of market. So if you get some foods from there, some snacks or things that you could eat for breakfast and lunch and then only eat dinner out, you're probably gonna save some money. Second, aim to stay at albergues that have kitchens because then you can get food from the marketplace and cook dinner, which is often the most expensive meal of the day at that kitchen. And even if the albergues don't have a kitchen, like a full on kitchen, a lot of times they'll have a microwave or toaster oven, some way that you could heat food. Several times I saw folks even pool together and they'd get pasta. One person might get pasta and one person might get some stuff to make a salad. And then they'd all sit down and eat together and have a shared meal that was pretty inexpensive between several people. And you could even do that yourself and then tote some of that with you, especially if it's cooler temperatures, lettuce is going to be okay in your pack from one day to the next. Another way to save a little bit of money is when you're walking during the day, instead of buying drinks or bottles of water every place you stop, there are fountains everywhere. So you can just fill up a water bottle or water bladder. And then I got to where I got 
tired of paying for water at dinner time. And I mean, I, I usually just wanted wine, but I also wanted water and didn't want to pay that extra. So I just bring my bottle of water in with me. And I know that some places that might be a health code issue, but I never had anybody tell me, excuse me, you have to you know, leave or go dump out your water or anything like that. The next big daily cost that you'll have is lodging. There are several types of albergues, like you've got the municipal albergues and the private albergues. The municipals may not have all of the extra comforts, but they are going to be a little bit cheaper usually than the private ones. There are also donativos, so those are donation based and oftentimes they have a communal meal. Now a lot of people think that this means that you can just crash there for free, but that really isn't fair because the food that you're eating the night that you stay there came from the folks who donated the night before. So it's kind of a pay it forward type thing. So if you don't put in your fair share, you're really kind of shorting somebody that's staying there the next night. So just keep that in mind. And if you do stay at a Donativo, make sure that you are contributing just as much as you would at least for a municipal albergue. So depending on what type of albergue you stay at, you can expect to pay anywhere from five euro per night all the way up to 20 euro per night. But the most common range is really between 10 and 12 euro. Of course, there are private rooms at the albergues or even other places that just offer private lodging. And those usually run anywhere from 20 to 40 euro per night. So some tips to help you with lodging costs. One of the things that I didn't personally do is get up early, like really before the sun comes up and set out as the sun is coming up. That way you start your day early and you get to where you're going rather early before the lodging fills up. The municipal and Donativo albergues tend to fill up the fastest because they are the more budget friendly options. And you might think, well, I'll just make a reservation. But a lot of times municipal albergues and the Donativos do first come first serve. So there really isn't an option for booking ahead. Now, the private ones you could call and book ahead and just pick the cheapest one if there are several options. Also, if you're gonna splurge a little bit and you want something more private, but maybe you don't wanna pay for a whole private room alone, you could get a double room and split with one other person that you've become fond of and maybe doesn't snore as loudly as some of the others. And so when you're feeling that you need a little bit more privacy, you can split a room with somebody. And even certain places, like especially when you get to the end of the Camino and you're getting closer to Santiago, a lot of places are more expensive for a single bunk in an albergue. So it ends up being a little bit more cost friendly to split a double room with somebody else. Another daily expense that is really kind of optional is laundry. For me, it didn't cost me anything every single day. But about once a week to once every one and a half weeks or so, Montana and I would do a load of laundry just so we could get a good wash in and a good dry in and have everything kind of freshened up because we often did it by hand. We started off doing our laundry by hand every single night. And after a while we were like, this is, this is just too much to have to do. So we did laundry about every other day by hand and then allowed things to air dry. For a complete washing and drying, you can expect to pay anywhere from three euro to 10 euro. Some albergues even take your dirty clothes for you and deliver them after they're clean. You'll see all sorts of variety along the way. And some albergues have no option for washing clothes, but this is just something to think about. If you are gonna wanna do laundry, make sure you include a little bit extra for that in your budget. And you could always uh, wash with the washer every once in a blue moon and only have half of that cost and then air dry or wash by hand and if you just want a good fluffing and drying because you got to the albergue late and you don't want wet clothes in the morning then make sure you budget the amount to use the dryer every so often. Another daily cost that you could encounter if you want to go full on luxury or if you're not physically able to carry your gear from place to place. They do have services where you can send your bag ahead and just carry a little day pack with some snacks and water or whatever you might need along the way. But that usually costs about five to 10 euro from what I've seen on flyers and such. I never did the service because I was never for sure where I was gonna end up at night, but that's something that you could do if you're not capable of having the weight on your back or you just don't want the weight on your back. That's pretty much it for daily costs. I would say budget in an extra euro or two per day for things that you might not even think that you'll need like band-aids or cold medicine, Advil, etc. 
just little expenses that you might not foresee but would need along the way. And again, a lot of people spend between 25 euro on the low end all the way up to 50 euro per day as their budget. I think it's a good idea ahead of time to kind of sit down and go, okay, where do I fall in this category and what am I willing to spend? And then each day, you know, kind of look at that. For me in Montana, we were about in the 35 to 40 euro range per person per day. And that's really because we couldn't take advantage of the staying at the albergues where you can cook because when I got to town, I had to start uploading videos and answering emails, et cetera, or doing live Q and A's with my patrons when we were in the bigger towns. I would have to take zero days. So again, it, it took us a little bit longer. So I would say our daily average uh, was a little bit on the higher end. And also we were the late to rise, late to town kind of folks. So we ended up having to stay sometimes in private rooms because that's all that was available when we got there or the more inexpensive options were already taken. Now that we've got the daily costs taken care of, let's talk about other costs associated with your Camino like gear. Gear will vary wildly depending on the individual. If you wanna check out my gear list and what I carried, you can even click on the links for the items if you wanna see what they cost. But my gear list is in the video description below. I saw folks carry everything from a tiny little day pack where it looks like they had snacks and some water in there. And then I saw folks carry huge expedition packs and they probably had several changes of clothing and a mini kitchen in there. So some people will bounce things ahead. Some people will carry everything on them. I carried my gear every day from place to place and took just the bare minimum of what I felt like I needed. Of course, my pack is a little bit heavier because I carry a lot of extra camera equipment that other people probably don't. But for this, if I had to just go out on a limb and throw a number and say, for this amount, I think that you could probably take what you needed i would say 500 dollars or less you could probably get what you needed now the gear that i had personally does cost more than that so it's just cheaper for me to just go ahead and take what i already had for wilderness backpacking trips and, and use it on the camino but i don't think that that gear is necessary and the basics of what you really need are a pack to carry your stuff a couple of changes of clothes a couple of pairs of socks something to sleep with some people carry just a silk liner i would if i was going to carry a sleeping bag liner would at least need a fleece liner because i'm i'm cold natured and i'm still not sure that that would be enough the albergues do have blankets but i'm not sure how often they're washed if at all and not all of them have blankets but you're not going to die you're going to be inside out of the elements you just might be a little bit un uncomfortable you'll need something to carry water in some sort of water receptacle and then i like having trekking poles and some good footwear so i think those items are really the necessities of what you need and for 500 dollars or less in, in my mind you could probably get some pretty decent stuff for that price but again it'll vary a lot on the individual and to show this if you've done the camino and you're watching this i would love for you to share the pieces of gear that you carried with you in a comment and then what that gear cost you before you went out there, just so folks can see the different variety of things that people take with them. Depending on where you're coming from, another large chunk of change will probably be spent getting to and coming back home from the Camino. For me in Montana, we flew into Paris and then rode a train from Paris down to St. Jean because, well, we just really wanted to see Paris. We had never been there. We were willing to take a flight that was gonna have a long layover in Boston, but we just looked at it as an opportunity to enjoy seeing something different. I had been to Boston, Montana had not. We had what was supposed to be a 12 hour layover in Boston. I booked the flight not quite two months in advance. And because I was willing to have a cheaper airlines with not all the bells and whistles and also that long layover it only cost us a little over 700 dollars total for the two of us one way to paris when we were done with the camino we returned to santiago because we walked from santiago to the coast by bus from Fistera to santiago then we took a taxi cab to the airport flew into rome spent some time in italy and i think our ticket to rome for both of us one way was a little over $300. And then from Rome back to Atlanta, we had two layovers, one in Portugal and one in Miami that was about seven hours long, I believe. So again, we were willing to have those layovers and fly budget airlines. 
and that ended up costing us about $650 for the two of us. So usually, yes, it does help to buy in advance, especially if you want the most direct flight and you wanna get there quickly, but even if you schedule at the last minute, because I really hate having return flights at the beginning of such a long journey because you just never know what's gonna happen and I hate having that specific date that I have to finish by in my mind and, and, and feeling the pressure of that. So I was willing to kind of take the hit in the end and, and have a little bit more of an expensive flight, but it actually worked out because we were willing to not have the most prime time of flight hours and have those layovers and be a little bit more uncomfortable on that end. If you do fly on an inexpensive airline, be sure to check their policy ahead of time for luggage and checking bags because sometimes they do charge you for carry-on items, sometimes they don't, sometimes carry-on might be more expensive or just the same as checking a bag. So you really wanna look into that ahead of time because those budget airlines do seem to nickel and dime you to death and you know, it could end up not being as cost effective if you don't do it the smart way. So we tried to make sure that we didn't have to check anything on the way back and that we could just carry our packs as carry on. But just something to look into because you might think like, hey, my flight ended up being pretty cheap and, and you don't budget for much more and then they gouge you in other areas. So be mindful of that. One more thing I wanna talk about because it's relevant to money and cost is the use of ATMs and carrying cash on the Camino. A lot of the businesses on the Camino are cash-based, especially the albergues, so you wanna make sure you have enough cash on hand for at least a few days. You're not gonna find an ATM every single day, but every few days or so you should find one. And to save on transaction fees at the ATMs, I often carry three to 400 euro at a time. That way I didn't have to stop at every ATM and then keep having those transaction fees. So you could take out the max amount of cash if you feel comfortable with that and then you're good, you know, until you start running low again. Um, but just keep in mind that the more you visit those ATMs, the more cost you're gonna have overall because of the transaction fees. There are areas where you can use cards, especially in some of the bigger towns and cities. So you can have a credit card or debit card with you. Make sure that you talk to your bank about your debit cards so you don't get over there and then get them cut off because they're wondering, hey, why is your money suddenly being spent in Spain for a couple of months? And if you are gonna use a credit card, make sure you talk to the credit card company ahead of time and find out if you're gonna have foreign transaction fees because some credit cards do have those and some of them do not. So that's another way to keep your costs low. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you today on what it costs to walk the Camino de Santiago. If you're watching this and you have already done a Camino, you've got any other tips for saving money or a cost that I didn't think about and you wanna include that, please feel free to do that in the comments below. So that way other people can learn from multiple people and not just me. I'm just one person with one experience, so I'm always happy to hear the input of other folks. If you found this video helpful today, don't forget to subscribe before you go. Thank y'all for watching and we will see y'all next time.